Hey everybody, thanks for watching. This is Andrew from Schnauzer Face Minis. Today I'm going to demonstrate painting a Kodiak, and I'm really excited about it. So let's get started. I right, begin by loading your brush with a reddish-brown color. Since we're just base coating, you don't need to worry about being really neat. In fact, if you just want to slop it all over, and then um, you can even speed things up by using the Fill tool. If you're going for an above tabletop quality, you may want to do some freehand, so grab some black and add in a nose and eyes and a mouth. All right, that is looking good. Let's save it and put it on the table. As a bonus to the tutorial you just saw, I'm also going to demonstrate how to paint a Kador Kodiak in case you're into that kind of thing. I prime with Vallejo Polyurethane Black Primer. Just a side note, I've also included a basing tutorial at the end of this video where I'll show you all the materials I use to put this together. red shade I use Vallejo Model Air Hull Red. It's more brown than red, but it provides a really nice deep shadow for red. Since red is such a tricky color to highlight, I find it best to start with a dark base coat and highlight up to red. If you start with a red base coat, it forces you to highlight with pink or really bright orange and yellow, which may not be the look you're going for. My first highlight is a one-to-one -one mix of VMA Hull Red and VMA Italian Red. Even though VMA paints are ready for the airbrush straight out of the bottle, my final mix is usually about two-to-one paint to thinner, just to make sure it flows smoothly and also to give you a little more translucency. My next highlight is VMA Italian Red, which is actually the same color I'm thinking of candy coating my sweet ride once I buff out that scratch on the driver's side door. I think some idiot must have hit me with a shopping cart or something. The next highlight is VMA Orange. You may remember from my kerchief video that I used a very different workflow to get Kador Reds. I was happy with that process, but I like the way this one turned out too. I feel like it's always a good idea to experiment and try out new things that look good, even if you're just going to use them as a backup. Incidentally, that's actually the exact same thing my wife said to me when she told me Enrique would be moving in with us. Finally, I use Vallejo Game Color Gold Yellow for very, very extreme highlights. I use Vallejo Game Color Red Ink to tie together the transitions and bring the highlights back toward red. It's about a 7 to 1 water to ink ratio. Ink is translucent. It's meant to tint the underlying colors, not cover them. For the green areas, I use Video Music Awards Olive Gray for the base coat. I've used painter's tape and poster tack to mask off the red areas. Be sure to take your time on this step, otherwise you're going to ruin your earlier work. I highlight with a one-to-one -one mix of olive gray and tank dark yellow.
is pure tank dark yellow. Final highlight is US Grey Light. thin glaze of tank dark yellow at a 5 to 1 ratio. I spray this over the entire model. This is going to help smooth out the transitions and tie the colors together. tape comes off easily and won't harm the paint, but I found poster tack can be a little tricky to remove. If you ball up a small piece of it and dab it at the putty on the mini, it will come off cleanly. If you weren't entirely precise with the masking, this is a good time to do some touch-ups. Alternatively, you could wait until the end and cover those areas with dirt, scratches, or battle damage. I use Vallejo Game Color Black to base coat the small area at the top of his armor. This is going to help set off the 5th Border Legion logo. Just as a side note, I love all robots that are identified as number 5. I begin highlighting the black area with P3 Coal Black. I like to highlight black with blue, which looks cool but isn't really accurate. I think that highlighting with gray and white just looks a little boring to me. Next is P3 Trollblood Base. I haven't bothered to mask off any part of the model as I'm just being careful where I point the airbrush. I don't mind getting overspray on his smokestacks because I haven't painted those areas yet. The final highlight is P3 Underbelly Blue. I use VMA Chrome to paint the silver areas. I love the VMA Silvers, but I find that Chrome, Aluminum, Steel, and Silver are all extremely similar in color. If you're on a budget, just grab one of those four. using Vallejo Pigment Natural Iron Oxide on the metallics. This will help reduce the shine and the fresh off the assembly line look that might not make sense for the Iron Kingdoms. Now I seal the model with Liquitex Gloss Varnish. This will protect the airbrush work and provide a really slick, glossy surface for the oil wash.
I use Windsor & Newton Ivory Black Oil Paint and Mineral Spirits to make an oil wash. One important note, use Mineral Spirits to make your wash. Stronger thinners like turpentine will definitely eat away at the varnish in acrylic paints, and I've learned this the hard way. The good news is that Mineral Spirits are cheap and easy to find at the hardware store. There's no need to slather the wash all over the place, just apply it where you want it. But don't worry if you get a little sloppy, oil washes are really easy to clean. Once the oil wash is dry, I seal it in place with matte varnish, which I forgot to film. You can help speed the drying process with a blow dryer or air from your airbrush. Now I do some cleanup with mineral spirits on a Q-tip. Just dab around the mini where you slop the oil wash and it'll come right up. The cool thing about an oil wash is that it will stay wet significantly, significantly longer than your ink or acrylic washes. For the gold areas, I use Vallejo Old Gold Metallic. This is an alcohol-based paint, so you can't thin it with water. You have to use isopropyl alcohol as your thinner. You'll also want a dedicated brush solely to these paints. Any water that mixes with the metallic flakes will rust, so you can't clean your brush with anything other than alcohol. These metallics aren't the best paints for beginners, but you won't find a better gold or copper anywhere. They are absolutely beautiful. I'm using VMA Gold for edge highlights. I use VMA Chrome to touch up after the oil wash and add a few edge highlights to the silvers. I use GW Griffin Sepia on the gold to give it a really rich, deep color. P3 brown ink at a 7 to 1 ratio with water. I'm slowly, slowly building up shadows on the gold.
Next I use P3 turquoise ink at an 8 to 1 ratio. This color is just to add a little visual interest. I like to see unusual colors and shades in my metallics. Finally, I use GW Leviathan Purple watered down 4 to 1. Again, this just provides some visual interest. If it doesn't suit your taste, I encourage you to experiment with other colors. I use VMA Gold to touch up just a final few spots. For the base, I'm using a lot of products here that you can find at the hobby store, the hardware store, or around the house. But what I'm most excited about is the plumber's putty I'm using. The product I have here is Rector Seal EP400, which I got at Home Depot for about six bucks. It's a huge tube of two-part epoxy that will last you for a ton of bases. You mix it up just like Milliput or Green Stuff, but it sets in about three minutes, so work fast. You can see here I'm just throwing various bits in there pretty much at random. I'm also using a piece of tin foil to rub on the putty to give it some texture. You can also use a rock for the same effect. I don't have camo green, so I mix one to one light camo green and black camo green. On that note, I know that some of the YouTube guys like Les from Awesome Paint Job is sponsored by Vallejo. So if any of the good people at Vallejo want to send me camo green, I think that'd be great. And when I say the good people at Vallejo, I mean like shirt off their back good. These are just some excellent top tier people over there. When I'm painting, you know the only thing that's more valuable to me than Vallejo products? Vallejo's friendship. Anybody who knows anything knows that VGC washes are the best in the market. I once knew a guy who preferred GW washes, and you know where he is now? He teaches English comp at a community college. So let that be a lesson. I use watered down VGC Beastie Brown to get a uniform color on the base. It almost seems wrong to add water to something as wholesome and as, dare I say it, honest as a drop of Vallejo paint. Vallejo paints are so pure that if you run them through a Brita filter, they come out exactly the same. Vallejo paints are just a dream to work with. They're vibrant and durable and densely pigmented, yet they're so smooth and thin. VMA paints are so thin, they can be mistaken for the plot of a Twilight movie. Vallejo paints are just incredible. 
They're so nice that I once had a bottle of primer that did my taxes, and I used the refund to invest in the Vallejo Corporation. Now my portfolio is looking sweet. Here, I'm using red cat puke on the bricks and then some yellow cat puke on the log. Of course, it's not actually cat puke. It's cat bile. That's right, anything not made by Vallejo is made of pure cat bile. Vallejo paints are so smooth, Santana and Rob Thomas wrote a song about them. Vallejo paints helped me get off drugs. Citadel paints just got me addicted. Vallejo weathering pigments look so realistic, I got tetanus just from looking at this model. I water down some matte medium and let it pool around the base. It's going to act as a glue for the pigments. I'm about to make this matte medium's day because I'm going to start piling on the Vallejo pigment. This matte medium just got upgraded to matte large. I once saw a bottle of Vallejo paint blessing a priest. Two bottles of Vallejo paint walk into a bar and everyone just starts cheering. I threw in a few Army Painter winter tufts. If Vallejo made tufts, they look so realistic that people would try to water them. I mix Woodland Scenic's water effects with snow flock and we're almost done. I'd like to mention at this time that Vallejo makes a water effects product that I would love to try out. I mean, in the event they had an extra bottle lying around, I would take it off their hands for sure. I just want to end this video by thanking Vallejo for everything they do from the bottom of my heart. Vallejo 2012.